Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 26, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Another nice quick uh, malware analysis example, uh, this time from Xavier, who is talking about a PDF that then linked to a malicious document. Often we do have a malicious document being delivered as an attachment or a simple link in an email that the user clicks on. Of course, that's often easily parsed by automated systems. In order to prevent this, another trick that we certainly have seen a lot of in uh, the last couple of years is that the document being attached to the email itself is not malicious, but instead just contains the link that then directs the user to the malicious content and the example here starts out with a pdf again that's pdf is in itself not really malicious meaning there is no real exploit here other than a link that links to a malicious powerpoint file powerpoint uh, is often a little bit ignored when it comes uh, to office documents but of course everything malicious that you can do in word or excel you typically are also able to do in powerpoint and that exactly what happens here so xavier walks you through the analysis of this document well, and one way how you may quickly analyze some malware is, of course, a virus total and uploading to virus total is done fairly commonly. If you think about it, virus total is trying to do something pretty difficult and dangerous. They're willingly accepting malicious files and then they have virus scanners. Uh, so software on the host, on the server, scan that uh, file that you uploaded. And well, uh, researchers at SciSource actually managed to exploit that process and gain remote code execution access on VirusTotal's servers. While in itself, of course, yes, and this affects uh, Google, it doesn't really affect uh, you personally that much, but it's a nice uh, example of how processing files on the server can be dangerous. The weak spot here was EXIF tool. EXIF tool is a command line tool that looks for EXIF data in a file. And well, uh, that particular tool does have a well-known vulnerability, CVE 2021-2022. 24, which then was exploited by these researchers and they managed to get a shell on the virus total systems. The exploit was relatively straightforward and EXIF tool is commonly used on web servers in order to inspect uploaded files. So uh, definitely if you're using EXIF tool, uh, double check that you updated and are not vulnerable to a similar exploit. And Apple's private relay apparently doesn't obey the PF firewall rules that you may set up on Mac OS. A report by Mulvad states that even if you do block UDP port 443 and Apple's private relay does use Quick, so that usually goes over UDP port 443, still allows Apple private relay to send and receive data via UDP port 443, so it does not obey these firewall rules like other user space systems. It's important to know, uh, since Apple Private really kind of acts sort of like a VPN, uh, if you do have another VPN solution, Apple Private Relay may still route traffic outside of the VPN that uh, you set up uh, in addition to Apple Private Relay. That is probably less of a surprise uh, because like I said, you sort of have then these competing uh, VPNs and that often leads to traffic going in unexpected directions. Well, I've talked uh, plenty about Emotet uh, before. We had a number of write-ups uh, by Brad about Emotet, and it's one of those malware campaigns that keeps on mor morphing. Now, they came out with a new version late last week, and apparently they had a bug in it where the installer did not actually work as designed. The malware arrived in a password-protected zip file and then used the usual 
Windows link shortcut in order uh, to then uh, start uh, its malicious uh, code. But uh, the installer uh, failed to install any additional malware. However, as of uh, this morning, Emote had fixed the vulnerabilities, I guess after they came back from their weekend. And uh, now Emotet does again install additional uh, malware, like for example, Cobalt Strike. These days, Emotet uh, most of all uh, tries to spread as uh, some kind of bank transfer or transaction verification uh, mal spam, where it claims that the attachment includes some information about some money transfer. And of course, then the user is tricked into opening uh, the zip file that will then lead to further exploitation. Well, this is for today. Uh, thanks for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.